the nature of reality. What is real? When we dream, we don't know we are dreaming. When we dream we are a bird, we sense that we are flying. When we dream we are a fish, we sense that we are swimming in the waters. Dreams feel real. It is only upon waking up that we realize we have dreamed. There was once a man who was transformed into a tiger. When his brother came to see him, the man, who was now a tiger, mauled him. We cannot say that this man lost his senses and killed his brother, because when this man became a tiger, the other man was no longer his brother. When he was a tiger, he had no idea what it was like to be human, and when he was human, he could not imagine what it was like to be a tiger. We assume that the reality that we live in is the ultimate reality. While we are experiencing this reality, we cannot conceive of other realities. However, when we transcend this reality, we realize that we have been dreaming, and after awakening from the dream, we cannot imagine how we could have lived in illusion and not known it. In winter, water freezes and becomes ice. In summer, ice melts and becomes water. We accept these facts because we know that this is the natural way of things. However, when things turn from good to bad, we fret. This is because we do not understand that good and bad times are also part of the natural way of things. If the body is exposed to extreme heat, cold, dryness, and dampness, it will be injured. Injure the body and the spirit will be harmed. If the spirit is affected by excitement, elation, sadness, frustration, and worry, it will be weakened. Weaken the spirit and the body will be injured. We are alive because spirit and body are together. If they are separated, we will die. Planning and scheming dissipate the spirit. Hard labor drains the body of vigor. If the energy of either body or spirit is spent, the two will separate and we will die. When an old horse dies, its skin withers and its hide becomes brittle. However, the fur of a dead puppy is soft and warm. This is because one animal has used up its life energy and the other has not. When a young person dies an unnatural death, the energy lingers even though the body is dead. This energy can become a ghost to haunt the realm of the living. When an old person dies naturally after living a long life, all the energy is spent. The dead person's soul will therefore rest in peace. Knowing this, we should care for our bodies and spirits and allow our energy to run its natural course. In this way, we can live in contentment and die in peace. The Tao is the underlying reality of all things. It can smooth the rugged and straighten the crooked. Therefore, if you are connected with the Tao, you will not be hindered by obstacles. Embrace the Tao and you will be able to come to terms with both good and bad times. If you choose to be a leader, your skills will be respected and you will be honored. If you choose to be a hermit, you will enjoy happiness and contentment. It is usually after a winter storm that we appreciate the ability of evergreen trees to weather the cold. Similarly, it is during times of hardship and danger that we appreciate the ability of the sage to hold on to the Tao and not forget its principles. Only those who can embrace the sky can cover the earth. Only those who embody the great clarity can see things as they are without preconceptions. And only those who have the courage to walk in darkness can be as bright as the sun and the moon. Use the Tao as a rod, virtue as the line, propriety and music as the hook, and compassion and integrity as the bait. Cast them into the river or drop them into the ocean, and all the things in the world will come to you. The Tao is at the origin of things. It penetrates the sky and the earth and extends beyond the four directions. It lets things be and does not control or manipulate them. If we understand the workings of the Tao, we will not try to change the natural way of things. We will know that if things are left to themselves, they will be in harmony with the Tao. This is not because the Tao has made them so, but because the Tao lets them run their course. The Enlightened Person Enlightened people can influence others by their presence. In their company, the poor will not feel dejected, the rich and powerful will not feel privileged, and the brave will not be proud. Teachers will not need to teach, and ministers will not need to advise. Guided by non-action, the sage does not need to speak to inspire others. Like a dragon or a snake, he can lengthen or shorten, expand or contract, and move or rest according to the demands of the situation. Externally, his behavior is consonant with the times. Internally, he keeps his own principles. 
His actions do not dazzle, his eyes and ears do not judge, and his thoughts do not wander. United with the Spirit, he embraces simplicity and lives in the realm of the great clarity. Because he is in harmony with all things, everything blooms in his presence. The enlightened person knows that the sky, the earth, the four directions, the breath of yin and yang, the moisture of rain and dew, and acts of virtue are all part of the greater scheme of things belonging to a universal harmonious order. There are many different species of trees, but they are all the same in the eyes of the Tao. Different nations have different customs, but to the Tao they are one large family of people. Everything in the universe is connected. It is said that seeing the flight of ravens and hearing the sound of flutes can conjure images of the frontier. When clouds gather, rain will fall. When moisture penetrates the earth, it becomes one with the soil. Cloud, rain, water, and soil respond to one another, not because they have certain skills, but because they are part of the natural way of things. Focus on differences, and things in proximity will feel distant. Focus on unity, and everything will be connected and related to everything else. Many philosophers try to solve the problems of the world, but they can only offer limited solutions. This is because they are not connected with the source. For example, Sun Tzu, 544 to 496 BCE, Mozi, 470 to 391 BCE, and Mencius, 372 to 289 BCE, all had different views on good government and effective leadership, but their teachings are like single spokes on a wheel that are neither necessary nor sufficient for the wheel to function. Although it is possible to build a functioning wheel without spokes, it is not possible to build a wheel with only spokes. It is the structural roundness of the wheel, not the spokes, that makes the wheel work. The sage knows that when something is separated from its source, its use is limited. Take, for example, the bits of metal that fly from the forge when a sword is being hammered on the anvil. These metal bits do not have much use in and of themselves because they are not part of the sword being made at the forge. They may have small uses, but because they are disconnected from the larger whole, they cannot be made into a functional object. Therefore, things that are not connected to the greater order cannot be the touchstone of reality, and teachings that are not connected to the Tao cannot offer a vision of the greater order of things. Today, people are more concerned with acquiring skill than being connected to the natural way. Martial artists, calligraphers, and even government ministers all learn from a standard set of instructions. If these disciplines are learned separately, a skilled calligrapher cannot become an accomplished warrior, and an expert martial artist cannot become a good minister. Skill is specific to a single area of expertise and does not give us an understanding of the nature of action. If you understand the natural way, however, you will know that the principles behind calligraphy, the martial arts, and statecraft are the same. When something is removed from the source, it no longer has the same properties. Cloth dyed black can appear darker than the dye, but the dyed cloth cannot be used as the source of the dye. Similarly, knowledge is diluted when it is removed from the source. The farther it is from the source, the less effective it will be. Even the teachings recorded in books are empty words if they are not connected to the source. If the sky is not balanced, the sun and the moon will not follow their paths. If the earth is not balanced, trees and grass will not grow. If we are not in harmony and at peace with ourselves, we will not be able to distinguish truth from lies. Therefore, true knowledge can only come from the heart of an enlightened person. If we do not know the ultimate reality, how can we know whether something is true or false? The sage puts her spirit at the center of her being and returns to the state before things were born, but she is able to see, hear, and act in clarity. Because she has no intention, she can accomplish great things. Because she knows through not knowing, she can understand the ultimate reality. To be kind, compassionate, and generous, and to bring happiness to others, this is benevolence. Achieving great deeds, commanding respect from others, setting things in order, separating private and public interests, discriminating the useful from the useless, keeping the country safe, training others for succession, putting down rebellions, building temples and shrines, and being kind to orphans and widows— this is integrity. Closing the nine openings of the body, hiding intention and will, abandoning know-how, returning to the state of not knowing, wandering far from the dust of the world, living leisurely in the realm of non-action, embracing yin and yang, and being at one with everything. This is virtue.
The Tao and Virtue When the Tao flourishes, there is virtue. When virtue is absent, benevolence and integrity emerge. Once benevolence and integrity are here to stay, virtue will be gone. Lao Tzu, 604-531 BCE, once said that the great Tao can dissolve benevolence and integrity, and that benevolence and integrity can destroy the Tao. This is because when there is virtue, there is no need for benevolence and integrity. When virtue is gone, benevolence and integrity are needed to maintain order in society. Virtue is part of the Tao. Benevolence and integrity are creations of humanity. Virtue is part of the natural way. Benevolence and integrity appear when the natural way is abandoned. When society disintegrates, philosophers and teachers appear. In the final years of the Zhou dynasty, 1046 to 256 BCE, the followers of Confucius and Mozi debated what the best form of government is and how to end social strife. They promoted their ideas and attacked their opponents. If they could not impress people with flowery speeches, they intimidated them with a display of knowledge. They posed as champions of social harmony and promoted culture and rules of behavior. Complicating an already complex society, codes of correct actions multiplied. People began to accept the expectations set up by society. They wanted to realize their ambitions, leave a visible legacy of their accomplishments, and be admired by future generations. They displayed their virtue, promoted their abilities, and abandoned the real for the false. As a result, they became ill and weak as they strayed farther and farther from the path of life. The Sage and Virtue The sage is never far from virtue, and virtue is never far from the Tao. When a large and beautiful tree is felled, it becomes just like any other tree. Floating down the river, it may appear better than logs of lower quality, but the essential difference between it and the other trees is gone. This is because it lost its essence when it was removed from the earth. Similarly, a person who loses his or her essence becomes an empty hulk. When spirit and energy stray, words and promises are empty. When virtue departs, actions are insincere. When the connection with the Tao is broken, behaviors are dictated by external pressure. Without essence, a person is an empty shell, acting to please others rather than following his or her own true nature. Smothered by desire and greed, he or she is no longer rooted in the origin. Buried in the dust of the world, he or she becomes a slave of desire and a prisoner of the will of others. The sage focuses on his inner nature and is not concerned with external form and appearances. Not allowing worldly matters to distract his senses, he can journey to the realm of clarity, knowing the depth of the springs of the earth, and explore the nine levels of the sky. He can merge with the realm of the void and wander in the expanse of nothingness. Externally, he can travel beyond this world. Internally, he can rest within the abode of his spirit. With the wind and rain as heralds and the stars as companions, he can travel far and wide, for there is nothing in the universe that can bind or hold him. The sage returns her inner nature to its beginnings and guides her spirit to the realm of the void. She follows the supreme teachings of the limitless and lives in a state of complete emptiness. The ordinary person, however, lives in a world consisting of rules and regulations that are designed to constrain her inner nature. Her thoughts are filled with anxiety and her senses are fatigued by constant excitement. She promotes pettiness in the name of benevolence, integrity, and culture so that she can display her skills and gain fame and recognition. The void is the home of the Tao and simplicity is its nature. When we tax spirit and energy to gain fame and fortune, we will stray from the abode of the spirit and lose our clarity. The ordinary person wants what he does not have. People who don't like the cold will long for the heat of the summer. Those who can't stand the heat will want the cool breezes of autumn. The poor want to be rich, the rich want to be famous, and the famous want to have power. The sage, however, is free from the burdens and desires of the ordinary person because he is in touch with the greater order of things. Carp is found in deep river gorges and not in a puddle of water on a muddy road. Large trees are found on high mountains and not in a small backyard. Similarly, the greatness of the Tao is found in the bright spirit of the sage and not in the limited consciousness of the ordinary person. 
If I had to choose between having friends and possessing the world, I would choose to have friends. If I had to choose between being liked by others and being at one with the beginning and end of things, I would choose to be at one with the beginning and end of things, to wander between existence and non-existence. The sage is in touch with the nature of things. In summer, she does not wear a coat. In winter, she does not carry a fan. She cooks according to her appetite and buys clothing according to her needs. If you are content with the essentials, how can desire creep into your life? Those who truly own the world do not pursue ambitions, and those who are truly honored do not seek fame. Those who want to be recognized, however, display virtuous behavior and hope that their actions will win praise and respect. They do not know that virtuous behaviors are but appearances, and that to try to return to the origin through appearances is as difficult as trying to get roots to grow from leaves. The sage does not feel elated when he is praised or dejected when he is blamed. At peace with life and death, he is not excited about living or anxious about dying. Even if he is engulfed by fire or swept by floods, his spirit remains calm and balanced. It is natural for water to be clear and still. It is the presence of mud that makes it murky. Human nature tends toward stillness. It is desire that makes it attached to things. The ear responds to sound, the eye to light, the tongue to taste, the nose to smell, and the skin to heat and cold. However, when there is desire, the eyes see beauty and ugliness, and the ears hear praise and criticism. When the senses respond to likes and dislikes, they lose their natural function. As a result, we will not be able to see a pit in our path or hear the thunder of an approaching storm. The spirit is the well of intelligence. If its source is clear, intelligence will be clear. If intelligence is bright, the heart will be peaceful. Troubled waters cannot produce clear reflections, but the surface of calm waters will image everything clearly. A rusty plate is not an effective mirror, but a piece of polished metal will produce a clear image. Similarly, true nature is revealed most clearly when the thoughts are still. If the Tao grows in your heart, peace and contentment will follow. Just as a polished mirror is not tainted by dust, a clear intelligence is not distracted by desire and craving. The spirit is the root, and intelligence is its branches. If we try to recover the root by gathering the branches, we will never get to the source. However, if we can hold on to the roots, the branches will naturally be gathered. When the eye is busy scrutinizing a piece of hair, the ear will not hear the sound of distant thunder. When the ear is busy discriminating minute differences in musical tones, the eye will not notice distant mountains. When we are too concerned with details, we will not see the big picture of things. Similarly, when we are attracted to things in the world, it is difficult to hold on to the great Tao and keep the stillness within. Muddy water becomes clear only after it has been left undisturbed for a long time. However, clear water will become murky the moment mud is thrown into it. Similarly, although it takes time and discipline to dissolve your thoughts, it takes only one speck of desire to disrupt the stillness. Following the Natural Way Following the natural way brings harmony and prosperity. When the ways of the Tao were followed, merchants prospered, farmers reaped good harvests, and hermits were free to cultivate the Tao. Even civil servants were diligent in their duties. During those times, wind and rain did not destroy houses, grass and trees did not wither, the nine regions of the country stood firm, jade stones and pearls were large and bright, and the sages were able to use their wisdom to benefit others. Things went well for everyone because the sagely rulers followed the way of their ancestors and placed the welfare of the people above all other concerns. When the ways of the Tao were abandoned, things went badly for everyone. Honest citizens were imprisoned and tortured, farmers lost their crops, merchants could not do business, earthquakes and floods devastated the country, people and animals were born deformed, and sages were nowhere to be found. When a lake dries up, the fish disappear. When a forest is stripped of trees, the birds vanish. When the ways of the Tao are abandoned, the sages hide. Like fish and birds, sages need a conducive environment in which to flourish. This is why things are better for everyone if the ways of the Tao are followed. Prosperous cities can be reduced to rubble overnight by an earthquake. When natural disasters strike, everyone is affected. Rich and poor, sage and criminal, coward and warrior. When fire sweeps through a forest, everything is burned. 
trees, flowers, weeds, medicinal herbs, and poisonous plants. Fish and marine life cannot thrive in polluted waters. Fruits and grains are damaged if there is an early frost. Similarly, the sage will not thrive if the environment does not support her existence. A horse tied to a fence is no different from a mule. We can appreciate the speed of the horse only if it is given the freedom to run. A monkey in a cage is no different from a chicken. We can appreciate the monkey's cunning only if it is allowed to explore. When King Shun was a farmer and a blacksmith, he could only help his neighbors. However, when he became emperor, he was able to help all the people in his kingdom. This is not because he was more virtuous as a king than as a farmer, but because as a leader he had more opportunities to exercise his virtue. When conditions are right, things will thrive. When conditions are not conducive, things will wither. Thus, when life is nurtured by the stillness of inner nature, it will flourish. When inner nature is nourished by the fullness of life, it will develop. And when people are born and raised in times of peace and harmony, they will naturally become sages.